Um, so, um, Mel, fabulous Mel Salvatore August. That is how we pronounce your name, isn't it? Am I doing that right? Hey, yeah, you're pronouncing it right. Yeah. Okay, good. That's That's a big name. So I called you. Yeah. I, I like called your husband like the wrong name for like you're like it's actually Rachel. It's <laughs> I stand with them. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right? Well, that's his whole life. His whole life's been like that. Oh, well. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm so happy. I'm always happy to share space and, mm-hmm. and chat with you and community. But yeah. I'm really I'm really excited today because one of the things that I wanted to talk about, which I think is so, um, so time sensitive right now, is about live streaming teacher trainings and about like navigating and facilitating teacher trainings online, which you have been doing since COVID started, like you're on the front lines and been doing it for months. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really happy to have your expertise here to hear a little bit more about like, how's that, how's that gone? <laughs> how's that been? Um, yeah, right. Well, what, what a, 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 first just to say like, what an intense and amazing five months. Wow. Right. And, um, and what I would say is that I had a, I was in the middle of a live teacher training, you know, in person. And then it, within, you know, literally it felt like minutes. <laughs> it was like, and now we're on camera. Right. Um, so what I will say is that uh, the experience ended up being a lot more fluid than I would have imagined in my mind. Um, and there was a certain trepidation from the students. So there was even uh, this aspect of like certain students were like, I just don't feel like I can do that. Right. And so then the group got smaller. So those who were there were actually really committed to finishing, committed to like being there. Mm. Um, so I just have to mention that because it, w- it wasn't like everybody was like, this is great. <laughs> right. I to go online. Um, and, and it was a, a positive experience because of this. As, as like, I feel like I have you right here. Hi. You know, like we could, we could have this intimacy and this closeness. And I did not expect that where it was like that Brady Bunch where everybody on the gallery and then we could get in and be like, how are you? How, what's really going on? Mm. So I feel like what really worked is that we could use the, the medium to get intimate to, and then to also have like a, a clean boundary with that too. Like, okay, and now we're moving on. Mm. <laughs> you're, you're muted. No, right. Or like I'm muted. Mm. So, um, uh, so anyway, it worked. I think that was a really long answer. Um, I'm going to be quiet. Now. Ah, no, this is what I want. So what I'm curious about is now, because right now, uh, your, your teacher training, you're with Yoga Works, a very established school that's been doing teacher trainings for thousands of years. No, like a couple of decades. Like so. right? mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, one of the first. So when you got into the live stream space, do you guys just live stream the whole 180 freaking hours or is there like, so as an educational designer, I think about, I think about online in two ways. I think about stuff that is synchronous, which is this, the zoom stuff where it's like you and me, we show up, we're in the same time. We're in the same relative. We're in the same time together, all together synchronous. And then there's the asynchronous stuff, which is when, you know, like the teacher training I developed has a lot of asynchronous learning where people go through it at their own time on their own pace. Um, And so they do it on their own and we don't have all the in-person time. Mm -hmm. So, and I imagine that for many schools at first, because you don't have something asynchronous created, it's like I'm live streaming you eight hours a day. So is that how it went? Or did you guys, were you able to add in asynchronous pieces? Uh, yeah, the only asynchronous pieces is mm-hmm. like class taking. So they could jump on to live stream or take an archive class with another yoga works trainer. Wow. So, uh, so everything was synchronous and it, it continues to be. So I'm about to, to start. We're about to do another um, mm-hmm. online. This, you know, again, we'll talk about that, but it's, you know, I'm about to jump into another one fully now. We're online. It's all synchronous learning. Um, so you have to be really aware of, uh, 
Zoom fatigue or camera fatigue, right? So in person, we wouldn't take breaks every 45 minutes. But, but in this kind of medium, it's like, okay, you need to take a break. You need to get up, <laughs> use the bathroom, blink, blink your eyes, cover your face, you know, to come back in. Um, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that's really intense. That's a lot of camera time. So I was gonna, like, what are, so you've sort of mentioned your, some of the strategies that you see around that, like a break every 45 minutes. Um, what else do you do as a trainer to prevent yourself from being totally exhausted by that process? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it definitely took me some time to kind of like get my chops up in that, that regard. Um, the usage of, you know, like, again, I'm on a zoom medium, so, you know, I, I'm sure there's many other ways to do it, but like breakout rooms, putting people together and have them begin to work things and give them tasks. So here we are trying to get that experiential as much as I, I can. So here I'm talking to you. I used to tease, I don't want to be Mel TV, right? <laughs> but that was in person. So now I really am Mel TV, right? Right. So I don't want to be Mel TV. Hi. Right? Um, so I would watch that channel. Right? I don't agree. <laughs> no, I watch it. I, I want Rachel TV. In fact, I am already subscribed. Um, <laughs> So, so to like, you know, give the, give the information, well, wait a second, let me back up. Mm -hmm. I always pull them in accountable. So cameras must be, must be on and we have a brief check-in here. Right. And, a, and, and, and a, a certain alignment guidelines, like, okay, you know what, when you're in camera, be in camera, right? Don't be eating in camera, the, all, all those dis, mm -hmm. distracting things. So then there's a certain accountability. Then uh, once that first initial, then it's like, okay, begin to impart the theory or whatever it is that we're exploring and then have them do it with me if we're talking about it, if we're, right, uh, bring something into the physical so they can touch themselves to have that kinesthetic mm -hmm. and then put them in to either together in a group to do it or maybe we all practice it together or have them shut off their camera, do an aspect of it. Let's say it's like build a sequence, write a sequence, then come back, right? So, so to continue to try and get, get the different modes of, of learning within that 45 minutes. Right, that's awesome. I think that's such good advice. It's like when we're in person, we think about that, you know, and I think it's not quite as petite because there's, there's actually like a raising of concentration in terms of being in video, which is super intense. Um, but when we're in the classroom, we think, oh, okay, I'm gonna shuffle it around. I'm gonna have everybody stand up and do a stretch. I'm gonna move us to a different part of the room. Okay, we're gonna do this interactive thing now. Okay, you're gonna go journal by yourselves now. And so to try to bring some of that same flexibility and agility into the online space mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you have any, so one of the challenges I think, um, maybe giving people like, and I, you know, it's funny, it, I've only, I've had very, you've had a lot of experience doing the Zoom, to, you're like an expert now in the <laughs> Zoom live streaming teacher training space. I've yeah, done a few, you are. I've yeah. done a few things because again, like the one I do is mostly asynchronous, but then we come together sometimes. And I've been surprised, really surprised by how effective, like I just did this class this morning where I had my beady little eyes on everybody and was like, Margaret, why didn't your warrior two stance? Nathan, wrap your right hip under more and spray, you know. And I was amazed, right? So how, like I found it actually surprisingly um, effective, mm -hmm. like more than I thought it would be because it being in person, I love being in a person and touching people. And obviously you can't do that. How has your experience been in terms of um, navigating students and giving them feedback on their practices and alignment and stuff like that in this kind of space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Such a, yeah, such a good question. And, and what I will say is I am a, um, I'm a fan of this so far because it's necessary, right? And it opens up our ability. Like I, I'm so ha happy to have this. Mm -hmm. um, and I do find as long as the student is set up properly in the camera and, and we can see, then I can, I can give feedback and it's effective. Um, so it's, it's been uh, pretty fluid. Now, recently, um, my, my new co-trainer, we're about to go into a training together, Jody Rufty. She's a 
Fantastic. I know Jody. Oh, she was like one of my teacher trainers back she's, in 2003. She's yeah. She's amazing. And, and she actually had suggested something that I'll share that I, I'm excited to do with her is to actually teach the students how to take multi uh, area, like, you know, have them from the front, from the back, and they shoot themselves. And then we look at the pose in real time with them, mm. with the photographs. Mm. Um, so I think she's, she even has it at a, you know, I, I'm saying this as a shout out to her and even next level, because I do feel like sometimes when it's live happening, you're like giving the feedback and they can't quite process it, but it still works, right? Um, so I think, you know, other than hands-on adjustments, um, I feel like we can do almost everything. We're, it actually forces you to improve your verbal skills, I would imagine. For you sure. For, yeah. For sure. <laughs> what about, so our hands-on assist part of the yoga works training, usually? Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know, like, this is such a hot spot. Like, we're touching into so much that has been... Um, revealed and unearthed over the last couple years with me too. I mean, just, so yeah, it, the hands-on adjustments, well, I have to say that over the years, my um, kind of translation of those adjustments, you know, every trainer is going to have their own kind of take on something, is super conservative. Even though I think, you know, a, a, an adjustment can be super powerful and potent. I know you and I have talked about this a lot. Um, but I'm, I'm a bit conservative on it. So, um, and I mean, of course we will go back into the room at some point. Of course we will. And I think for the foreseeable future to really offer this um, uh, support, healing support to others, we're not, we're going to be this way. So I don't know how, how much of value it is right now. Anyway. Right. Right. So I let it go in my last training. Yeah. I mean, how do you do it? Like, <laughs> yeah. And that can be next level. Like that can be, we can leave that for the 500 hour, you know? Yeah. yeah. Or a continuing and, you know, education thing. Yeah. 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 Too. And, and when it, when it's applicable, when it's applicable, then you go and you get that, that specialized training. I mean, something you could do is like, uh, and I didn't do it, but it occurred to me. And I think, you know, again, another trainer's props to somebody else, but they were like, okay, I have someone in my home they can do the poses. I'll do a video to show. Yeah. How you would do it. Note yeah. to self could, you know, I'll, yeah. maybe I'll do that for the next training. I know. I always like, I always make them touch me though. Cause it's like, honestly, if they could touch someone else and it looks good and you're like, how does it feel? Like, so they don't always get the yeah, honest that feedback. Really like, creepy. That, that feels was... really weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's a good, yeah. That's, that's one of the ones it's like my friends who are massage therapists. That's something it's like, or chiropractors. It's like, no, we, there are things that are in person that you just can't, can't be replicated in the online space. But in the yoga teacher training, I think what I'm hearing is that it's surprising how much of it can translate into the online space much more than we thought, which will bring us to an interesting crossroads with yoga Alliance which we don't need to go into, but it's an interesting crossroads with them because they are not set up to, um, and, and I, have, I have respect for their intentions. They are not set up to evaluate online trainings at all. Um, they don't even evaluate the, now as most of people know, they're allowing 40 hours to be online within the teacher trainings, but they do absolutely no oversight of what those 40 hours contain. Mm -hmm. They are just trusting that it's a good program which is a little bit like a Hail Mary. And uh, it's simply because evaluating, I've done, to toot my own horn, I took two extensive, in addition to my master's, I did two courses specifically in evaluating, how to evaluate the efficacy of online courses. It's called Quality Matters. And it's, it's, awesome. it's, set up, it's, it's really awesome. And it changed the way that I, that I design online courses now. And it, I share that out. And when I teach people how to do courses or I help them with their courses, we use that high quality standard um, to try to, to, to meet that. Um, but, but it's so time consuming to truly evaluate an online course, like to really go in and check all the links and make sure the accessibility is right and make sure that all the, you know, that you have, um, 
uh, appropriate references for everything that you you're using and make sure everybody's got copyright approval and then to make sure that it's structured in this way and then to make sure you have access to these policies and to make sure that the navigation flows correctly it's like it's intense like they you know so i understand why they can't evaluate it but what i'm also hearing is that there may be more possibilities for using online training in a way that's super successful and can help and can can work beyond what um beyond what the current standards allow for well, two things that hit me one you know just i want to affirm like your voice is needed oh thank you yeah your voice is needed and it's important so keep talking sister <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so that's one and and two what i was saying is that i feel like we, you know we're 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 in triage is that is that the right word like we're like we're just yes. trying to stay alive here yes right? survival we are totally in survival and then once, um, and I feel like there is this, like, just in this last couple of weeks with whatever, the new kind of wave of more cases and people like, oh, we opened, well, maybe we should close back up. Um, I feel like now we're kind of settling in like, okay, this, this is not a, we're not on vacation. This is, we're not visiting. Yeah. This isn't temporary. It, yeah. Right. This is, this is a, this is the new normal. And so that will, you know, so now it's like, we just kind of, we kind of got to get the bare bones up. Keep, keep the, the learning alive. Keep the learning alive. Keep the healing modality growing. And then let's refine it. Yeah. Um, and I'm super grateful for that, you know, and, and for myself too. Like, I'm, not only have I been training, but then I've also been able from the, my own classroom to then like take with that I wouldn't have been able to, you know. Um, so I am very grateful for that. So I hope that we as an industry, um, you have dirt in my fingernails from gardening. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> Can't hide anything on this camera. We as an industry, um, don't kind of cut off our nose to spite our face, right? That we don't clamp down or make things not possible and stop the flow because there is going to be a process that we just kind of have to follow. It's gonna be a little messy. It already is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I think there will be, I mean, I was sharing this with you earlier. I mean, I think there will be more like more doors open to use online and like when, when we're out of triage, then you, you whoever these different companies right now, I mean, I know everyone's just trying to keep their teacher trainings alive, right. And serve the students and yeah. serve the passion and honor their commitments. And, um, and, uh, and, and so right now it's like, okay, it's going to be all live stream. And then in the future, as we're able to take the luxury of being less reactive, there will be more development of things like the asynchronous training, which allows, which has enormous benefits. You know, like if yeah. you're going to do an online course, it's good to have some of it asynchronous so people can do it at like midnight or 4 a.m. or when their kids aren't yelling or, you know, whatever it is like. So that, that'll become a component of these, which will serve the students experience and we'll wind up with more blended programs, right? Some of it synchronous and some of it. Yeah, online. absolutely. And I feel like that's where it's like, I can see that that's coming. Yeah, that'll Very come soon. It's uh, so much work to create quality asynchronous trainings. And that's why, that's why I think it's good that there's a, a caution to it. Like it's super appropriate and good, even though it's tiring to do it all live stream to preserve the efficacy of those programs rather than just, I mean, what I get scared about Mel, um, is that I go online and I see all these advertisements for 100% online trainings and get your online training now and we're going to get, and like when it's a company like yoga works, I go, okay, I know the quality of that program. I know the quality of the instructors and I go, yeah, you guys are going to kick your students asses and make sure they get it and like hold them accountable. And I have a lot of faith in that. But then there are other online trainings. I'm sure there are many very well-intentioned trainings who are doing that. And so, and I support them and I send them love. But what scares me is that I fear that there may also be trainings out there which seem online, which are thrown together. Like take these yeah. online classes, go watch these YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Here's a random lecture we recorded three years ago, which lacks the scaffold to hold the process together and yeah. lacks the interaction that you're talking about, which is faculty, keenly focusing on their students and helping to elevate them so that's that's where i get nervous and where i want all the students out there 
to like do their due diligence on trainings that they sign up for to really know because they deserve a good training experience. And um, so that's, that's where I get, that's where I get scared um, mm -hmm. or nervous where I'm like, yeah. okay, you're going online. I know how hard it is to do that well when you're doing the asynchronous stuff, like building out courses. So like, it's kind of like a consumer beware moment where it's just like, okay, you know, talk to your program directors and find out what they're really about before you jump in. Do you think it's, uh, it's that different than in, in person though, in that way too? Cause it's like, like, no, that's pretty similar. <laughs> I mean, like I went like, how do we address that? I mean, I, I feel like, you know, again, I don't ever feel like in the yoga world, like there's, it's like an evilness or like, well, yeah. I, mean, I could be totally wrong. Okay. Forgive me. I'm naive. But I feel like most people are trying to do the best they can within the confines of our yoga. Yeah. So, and then if they just don't know better, they don't yes. know better. Yes, I think that's true. And that's, this is one of the reasons that Yoga Alliance has cracked down in the last year and said, we're upping our standards. Now you have to submit. You didn't have to use to submit your student manual. You're just like, I'm going to write one. <laughs> like, Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. So now they up their standards to try to account for those qualities and to, and to support people to elevate to a design standard um, that is more effective. And, you know, I don't, I, and I, and I love Krista who is like running the thing. And I think again, great intentions and stuff like that. And I applaud them. Yeah. 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 I, it's a, that's a big job and I'm a little nervous about how they're going to manage it. But, um, but I've written, I wrote, well, I wrote a couple of articles. Um, one was just about how do you choose a teacher training period. Um, mm. And then one I wrote a, a recently, which was about questions to ask your online teacher training program, which will just get for any students again. And you're right. These questions would be relevant online or off, honestly. But it's like to ask about some of the, those questions that you, that they should know the answers to. How will I be assessed? are like, what are the learning objectives of your training? How much time is asynchronous? How much time is in person? What are the kinds of materials that you're using if they're asynchronous? Um, how do you evaluate my personal practice? You know, what are the standards for evaluating my teaching? Just to get people, so because if what comes back to them are, are clear answers, then they go, okay, these people have at least thought about those questions. Yeah. And again, you're right, I don't think it's evil. I just think it's, they haven't been necessarily, like this is why I got into this so that I could help yogis think like educators, right? Um, yeah. because they haven't had the opportunity to think like an educator yet. So as a student, you can find out like they called, you know, they called you guys and said, what are the learning objectives? I have a feeling yoga works would be able to say, this is what our training does. This is what you'll be able to do. Like it's For pretty sure. clear. Yeah. For sure. Well, what, I mean, what, why are we get into that yoga and teaching yoga is uh, a healing modality and also an art form. And so that's where sometimes it's like, it gets a little like, well, it's just magical here. <laughs> And you're like, it is it's magical. And, and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I have some skills. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. To finish up, I have, um, I have, uh, I have three questions for you. Okay. okay. One is what are your three favorite things about presenting your training using this format live stream and online three favorite things about it? Um, the, and I know it sounds strange, the intimacy of being right here. Mm -hmm. I love it. I just love it. Okay. I get to really see people's eyes in a way that across the room I don't get to see. Mm, um, yeah. Two, selfish, convenient, so convenient. I go into my yoga room. I don't have my, my commute is very minimal. And in that convenience, I get to connect with someone in Baltimore, someone in London, someone in, and, and we all come together and I get, I, I, you know, I get to deliver, they get to receive, I get to mm. receive, we go back and forth, right? It's really, it's quite mutual. Um, a bigger experience. Mm. So I feel like the ceiling has been taken off the classroom. And third, Gosh, I'm not sure. I think my, my, my number two was kind of both, that the ceiling is taken off the classroom. So, so uh, and, and that it's more accessible to others. So that was kind of my selfish. I think it's more accessible for me. But I also see so many other people like 
I can do this now, right? So, yeah. um, so I love that. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Good. Um, what is, what are the, we'll just, we'll keep it to like maybe, okay, two things that you find frustrating about the current format. We'll do three, like three, two, one. So two, two things that you find. Well, well or the challenge points, the challenge, challenge points. points. For this. I think that if someone's having a, it, it's, this works really well if the student and the teacher are having a fairly harmonious time. It's really good. When it's good, it's good. But when the student is disengaging or pulling back, there's no way to get to them. I mean, I don't mean no creepy way to get to them, but like, uh, if someone starts to have confusion and trouble and they start pulling back or they don't put on their video, like suddenly it, it's just this huge chasm. So that intimacy will then dissolve. So that's, that's, mm. that's my number one. And okay. I've seen that happen not too many times, but a couple times. And I wasn't sure how to breach that chasm that that student really has to come forward. Mm. Um, so as a trainer, I feel like I, I'm really relying on the student um bridging that uh and and two i feel like maybe just the physical limits of when there is a limit of seeing that student's physical practice so really on the asana and then helping protect them you know in something more complex like inversions and again i'm talking physical asana yeah right yeah so in that way to, I, I feel much more conservative. I may not teach the same level of complexity because I, I'm having a hard time seeing. I'm seeing feet, but I'm not seeing arms. You know, I, there's so many screens. I'm looking at one person. I miss somebody falling over over there. So, and I'm yeah. open to all suggestions. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, a tough I'm one. Exactly. No? The inversions, that's a, that's a tough one, inversions, because I, yeah, I would want to be in the room, I imagine. Like, it, it's, hard, it's hard to teach those if you can't be there to kind of, like, yeah. be the sheriff a little bit. Yeah. Can, can, what, I mean, do you have a, a, a one more minute to, to answer those yeah. questions yourself? Oh, sure. Even though I haven't, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's a great question. So three, three benefits about live streaming. I would say, um, yeah, I would say number one would be convenience. Um, convenience for the students who can show up from their home for this whole COVID thing, for the health of whatever we're doing here, convenience and yeah, and my ability to show up too. I think too, actually, interestingly enough, I think that there's an opportunity in live streaming for students to watch other students a little bit more easily because like one of the things I'll do in my practice is I'll say, you can be a creeper. I'm like, you can stop the practice. You can look at the gallery of all the bodies and you can look at all the bodies, which is something that we don't often do in, um, in a yoga practice, right? Because we have asana labs and stuff, but I'm like, be creepy. Go look at bodies. Oh, I love that. Can I, can I adopt that? Yes. Take it. As long as you call it the creeper method. Of course. <laughs> um, Something else about live stream that I like, let me think, um, that it does well. I'm trying to think if there's something that I think it does well more than being in person. Um, I do like the breakout rooms, actually. Mm -hmm. I like that we can use that in Zoom to, um, to create those little intimate modules with people, which actually feel quite, it's like when you're in a room, and this is, a, this is something weirdly and totally pragmatic. When you're in a room of students and you send everybody to do small group projects, it's so freaking loud. Nobody can hear you. It's like, it's awful. And so the fact that we can actually do that and send people to do activities on their own and you can check on them and kind of go around. Like, I actually think that that's something which is better than the physical space because yeah. in the physical space, it's, ca it's cacophony, right? Yeah. And there they can really actually have privacy. Interestingly, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. so those would be three things I like. Two things I don't like or that are challenging is absolutely, I think you just pinned it. It's like, the asana is being able to see people 360 degrees in real time and just turn them around. The resolution is better in person, right? It's like get 4k in person, baby. It, you don't get it on zoom. And it's hard to keep, if you have a lot of people, it's hard to keep track of all the students. I can scan the room like this. I can scan the screen, but I, it's easier in person. 
Um, and the second thing is hands-on for me. It's like being able, not only just so that they can learn hands-on, but be able to give them a feeling of the hands-on. Like I miss that, I miss that yeah. flesh to flesh. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is why I like the idea of, of, of combining the, 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 get the best of the online and then get the best of the in-person ultimately. So here's my, here's my last final question to you, which would be, if, okay, so say COVID's over, woo, we can go back to in-person, yay. Would you want to, would you keep some of the online portions or would you say like back to the in-person classroom? For sure, for sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, a, I'm online to stay. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Do. And, then, and then in person with very specific, you know, the, exactly how you said it. So I, I feel like that is that is my personal f future. It's too good. I don't want to let go of the the benefits. They're too good. Yeah, they are. It's true. And I, maybe that's one of the the golden linings of all of this is that we've discovered that oh hey, not only can we tolerate this online experience, there are benefits to it. Um, yeah, talking to people in Hong Kong and Bali and Barcelona or whatever, and you know California being able to create these global communities um, and some unexpected benefits that we might not have foreseen about or, or, or even bothered to find out about, right? Unless we were forced into this situation. So, I so appreciate you. I appreciate you. Mel, how can people find you? Tell us, tell us how uh, to find you. And um, stalk you, know, you. you can find me at my website, melaniesalvatoreaugust.com. Uh, and you know, I'm, all, <laughs> I'm a creeper all over social media, so you'll find me. I'm still on Facebook. I like my Facebook. Still? I'm sorry. Is Facebook passe? Do I have to be only Some on of the youngins. Some of the youngins are like Facebook. No, you know, Facebook, Instagram, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm around. And on at Yoga Works. Yeah. So I have a, the teacher training. August 17th, we start. Jody Rufty. And me. Yeah. Rufty. Yeah. So Jody, New York. Me and, and, uh, and California. Um, yeah, so it should be super good. It's going to be a six-week intensive for uh, Yoga Works. And yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every week. All so, right. Yeah, so thanks. Wow. thanks. Thank you, Mel. Thank you for your time and your wisdom. I love your face. I love your face.